Okay, thank you. Thank you very much. No, Rick. Good morning and welcome. We will get started in just one moment. Good morning and welcome. We will get started in just one minute. Thanks for joining us. Good morning and welcome. We will get started in two minutes. So you ready? I'm thinking if he's not here by now, you need to start at 12. I should. Let me, uh, let me get this started real quick. Okay. Try not to get the car. I'm gonna try to do it right at 12:05. Okay. Put it in airplane mode. Big boss call is ready. Dave. Did you get a smile? <laughs> Good morning and welcome. We will get started in one minute. <laughs> Folks, we're going to begin and it will be recorded. Good afternoon. My name is Rocky Martinez and I am the commander of the American Legion, the Renton Pickering Post 79, located in Snoqualmie, Washington. I want to take a moment to personally thank all of you joining us on our first virtual Memorial Day service. We appreciate you joining us to honor our fallen. So on behalf of American Legion Post 79 and our auxiliary unit, the Veterans of Foreign Wars 3436, the Vietnam Veterans of America, and the American Legion Riders, I welcome you all to our observance upon this day. Memorial Day began following the Civil War as a time to honor the dead of that terrible conflict, both the dead of the Union and of the Confederacy. This special day to remember the human loss of both sides was celebrated first in 1866. And by a provident coincidence, ceremonies took place in Columbus, Mississippi and Waterloo, New York. In 1868, the Commander-in-Chief of the Grand Army of the Republic 
John A. Logan ordered that May 30th of that year be set aside for the purpose of strewing with flowers or otherwise decorating the graves of comrades who died in defense of their country during the late rebellion. Over the years on Memorial Day, since 1971, celebrated on the last Monday of May, has become the time when the United States thankfully remembers and honors its citizens who have died during war and in the service of their country. We remember those of our nation who bore the honored title of veteran of the armed forces and who have died in the past year. I would ask you to rise as the colors of our nation, the flag under which our brothers and sisters fought, and the colors of our veterans organization are presented. Four guard, ten, hut. Advance the colors. Forward. standing while the chaplain asks the blessing of our, the Creator upon our gathering today. Prepare for prayer. Heavenly Father, we thank you for the opportunity we have to be here in this honored place. Lord, we ask your blessing on our, on our service here and as we honor those who fell in the line of duty. Lord, we also ask your blessing on family members and friends who may also attend here or virtually um, and bring blessing on them as well as they remember the people who are so important to them. So it helps to remember that they are not names on a wall or names on a, on a monument somewhere, but they are actual people. And they are our sons, they are our daughters, they are our parents, grandparents, and our friends. And help us never to forget the sacrifice that they made and help us to always remember that freedom is not free. And be with us today as we honor these fallen heroes and help us to do the things that, um, that honor them and not um, cause them uh, any embarrassment. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Please join us in saying the Pledge of Allegiance. <clears throat> I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Since the first shots fired in the Revolutionary War, Americans have answered the call to duty and given their lives in service to our nation and its sacred founding ideals. As we pay tribute to the lives and legacies of these patriots on Memorial Day, we also remember that they sacrificed to create a better, more peaceful future for our nation and the world. We recommit to realizing that vision, honoring the service of so many who have placed love of country above all else. As Americans, we will always defend our freedom and our liberty. When those principles are threatened, we will respond with uncompromising force and unparalleled vigor. Generation after generation, our country's finest have defended our republic with honor and distinction. Memorials, monuments, and rows of white crosses and stars in places close to home like Arlington, Virginia, and Gettysburg, Pennsylvania as well as far-flung battlefields in places like Flanders Field in Belgium and Busan in Korea, will forever memorialize their heroic actions 
standing as solemn testaments to the price of freedom. We will never take for granted the blood shed by these gallant men and women as we are forever indebted to them and their families. This year marks the 75th anniversary of the Allied victories over Nazi Germany and Imperial Japan in World War II. As we commemorate these seminal events, we also remember the tremendous cost at which these victories came. More than 400,000 souls of the greatest generation perished during the titanic struggle to liberate the world from tyranny. In his address to the nation on Japan's surrender, President Truman's words remind us all of our enduring obligation to these patriots for their sacrifice. It is our responsibility, ours the living, to see to it that this victory shall be a monument worthy of the dead who died to win it. As we pause to recall the lives lost from the ranks of our armed forces, we remain eternally grateful for the path they paved toward a world made freer from oppression. Our fallen warriors gave their last breath for our country and our freedom. Today, let us pause in quiet reverence to reflect on the incredible dedication of these valiant men and women and their families, invoking divine providence as we continue pursuing our noble goal of lasting peace for the world. In honor and recognition of all of our fallen heroes, the Congress, by a joint resolution approved May 11, 1950, as amended, 36 U.S. Code 116, has requested that the President issue a proclamation calling on the people of the United States to observe each Memorial Day as a day of prayer for permanent peace and designating a period on that day when the people of the United States might unite in prayer. The Congress, by Public Law 106-579, has also designated 3 p.m. local time on that day as a time for all Americans to observe, in their own way, the National Moment of Remembrance. I will now read the proclamation. Now, therefore, I, Donald J. Trump, President of the United States of America, do hereby proclaim Memorial Day, May 25, 2020, <clears throat> as a prayer of permanent peace. And I designate the hour beginning in each locality at 11 a.m. of that day as a time when people might unite in prayer. I further ask all Americans to observe the national moment of remembrance beginning at 3 p.m. local time on Memorial Day. I also request the governors of the United States and its territories and the appropriate officials of all units of government to direct that on Memorial Day, the flag be flown at half staff until noon on all buildings, grounds, and naval vessels throughout the United States and in all areas under its jurisdiction and control. I also request the people of the United States to display the flag at half staff from their homes for the customary forenoon period. In witness thereof, I have hereunto set my hand this 21st day of May in the year of our Lord 2020 and of the independence of the United States of America, the 244th, Donald J. Trump. Please join us in a prayer of remembrance. Prepare for prayer. Our Heavenly Father, we once again thank you for the opportunity we have to be here. And Lord, we, we stand here in front of this um, honored place in front of these honored men and women who uh, died and perished for our freedom and our peace and our liberties that we enjoy and help us never to take that for granted and Lord we remember that on these monuments here on your monuments in cities around the state and around the country and in our nation's capital especially on the Vietnam War Memorial that they are not just names that they are people they are human beings they are friends and family members. We have many standing here who have felt the pain individually and, and abroad virtually, who have felt individual loss and are suffering today um, in remembrance of, of the people who have fallen. We ask that you be with them, give them comfort and peace that only you can give. We ask that you help us to remember them and honor them in this small way for the price that they paid for us so that we can enjoy the freedoms and the liberties that we enjoy every day. Help us never to take this for granted and help us to 
not only on this day, but every day, remember that freedom isn't free and there were many people throughout our history who have paid the supreme price for our freedoms. We ask that you be with the soldiers who are um, in harm's way now, that they will um, be safe and watched over and we will not end up having to memorialize them as well. We ask all these things in your name. Every crisis has new heroes. During the 9-11 attacks, they were the first responders running into burning and crumbling buildings as others ran out. Now, during the coronavirus pandemic, the most visible heroes are the healthcare professionals who are saving others and risking their own lives while doing so. These heroes have much in common with the people that we honor today, America's fallen veterans. They are men and women who have sacrificed their own lives so others could live. They are both elite and ordinary. They are elite in their sense of character. Giving your life so others could live is the ultimate defi definition of selfless. They are ordinary in the fact that they represent the diverse fabric of our country. They are rich and poor, black and white, male and female. They come from every ethnicity and background. In short, they looked like any one of us. As we celebrate the selfless and untiring performances of the healthcare workers during the COVID-19 pandemic, it brings to mind the military medics, doctors and nurses who sacrificed their lives while treating others on the battlefield. One such hero was pharmacist mate, third class, Jack Williams, the Navy Reserve Corpsman who only 20 years old when he landed on Iwo Jima 75 years ago. On March 3, 1945, James Naughton, a Marine in Williams' unit, was wounded by a grenade. While under intense enemy fire, Williams dragged Naughton to a shallow depression and treated his wounds. Williams used his own body as a screen and was shot four times, yet he continued. After he treated Naughton, Williams dressed his own wounds. He then proceeded to treat another Marine despite his own immense pain. While heading to the rear, he was hit, in a, hit by a sniper's bullet and killed. For his actions, Petty Officer Williams was awarded the Medal of Honor. We also remember Army veterans like Lieutenant Sharon Lane. According to her biographer, Philip Bigler, Lieutenant Lane threw herself into her work as a nurse. While serving in Colorado, she requested a transfer to Vietnam. There, at least, you are busy 12 hours a day, six or seven days a week, she said in a 1968 letter to her parents. Her dedication was obvious, even as she treated enemy Viet Cong soldiers who, cap who would return the favor by kicking, cursing, and spitting at their American captors. In the early morning of June 8, 1969, Sharon's tour of duty ended. A Soviet-built rocket struck the hospital. Lieutenant Sharon A. Lane was killed in action at age 25. If she were still here, her, her skills as a nurse might still be benefiting us during the current crisis. But not all of the heroes working during the COVID-19 pandemic are in the healthcare industry. Grocers, first responders, delivery workers, and drive through restaurant employees are just a few of the many people that we rely on to provide vital services for society while risking our, their own safety. The military also has heroes in every occupational field. Truck drivers, cooks, and administrative clerks have all paid the ultimate price. At sea, on land, or in the air, military service requires great risk. Roy Knight Jr. was a pilot of the, in the U.S. Air Force. On May 19, 1967, he was shot down while tar attacking a target in the Ho Chi Minh Trail in Laos. He was posthumously promoted to colonel. Last year, a joint team from the Defense POW MIA Accounting Agency discovered and later identified Colonel Knight's remains. When his remains arrived at Dallas's Love Field, a crowd had gathered to witness the dignified trans transfer of the flag draped casket from the Southwest Airlines jet into the receptive arms of the military honor guard. One observer reported that the entire crowd fell silent. 
The Southwest flight was piloted by another Air Force veteran, Colonel Knight's son, Brian. Brian Knight was only five years old when he said goodbye to his father as the Elder Knight left for Vietnam. This is yet another legacy that these heroes leave behind. A legacy that includes their sons, daughters, grieving parents, grandparents, and friends. Their heroic acts are sometimes performed to protect those with whom they serve. Corporal Jason Dunham was a squad leader with the 3rd Battalion, 7th Marines in Iraq. On April 14, 2004, his squad approached a Toyota Land Cruiser. After his squad discovered AK-47s in the vehicle, the enemy insurgent exited, engaged in hand-to-hand -hand fighting with the unit. The driver dropped a grenade. To save his fellow Marines, Corporal Dunham made the ultimate sacrifice. He threw himself on the grenade and tried to use his helmet to shield the blast. Severely wounded by the grenade's fragments, Corporal Dunham was taken off of life support eight days later. Corporal Dunham died so others could live. He too was awarded the Medal of Honor for his gallantry. Approximately one million men and women of the U.S. military have lost their lives in defense of our nation since the founding of this great republic. Not all have died from enemy fire. Some have died from diseases that have too often festered around war zones. Oftentimes, deaths from disease and accidents outnumbered casualties caused by enemy weapons. During the Spanish-American War, 60 soldiers from the all-black 24th Infantry Regiment volunteered to serve as nurses. 36 of them would later die of yellow fever or malaria. A generation later, the flu would kill nearly 16,000 U.S. soldiers in France during World War I. Another 30,000 American service members died in stateside camps. These men and women could have isolated safely in their homes, but they knew they had an important job to do, a mission to accomplish. They were all on a mission to serve. Even when the enemy is an invisible virus or a microscopic germ, the sacrifices made are just as meaningful. The U.S. military has already lost service members to COVID-19. This Memorial Day, as we continue to honor those who fell for us in battle, let us also pause to remember those who have sacrificed their lives while serving others. May God bless them and may God bless you for remembering them here today. In closing, upon this Memorial Day, we gather thankfully for God has given us the gift of memory that we might keep alive those we love. In the rising of the sun and in its going down, we remember them. In the blowing of the wind and in the chill of winter, we remember them. In the opening of buds and in the rebirth of spring, we remember them. In the blueness of the skies and in the warmth of summer, we remember them. In the rustling of the leaves and in the beauty of autumn, we remember them. In the beginning of the year and when it ends, we remember them. When we are weary and in need of strength, we remember them. When we are lost and sick at heart, we remember them. When we have joys and special celebrations we yearn to share, we remember them. When we see our nation's young marching behind our flag or hear taps played, we remember them. So long as we live, they, shoot, they too shall live, for they are a part of us. And when we answer the final role, we know that our brothers and sisters will fulfill their duty and greet us with the words of compassion and friendship, peace and love. Welcome home. God bless you all. God bless America. And God bless our fallen heroes.
Fire three volley. Detail. Port. Pops. Left, right. Pace. Ready. Aim. Fire. Aim. Please join us in our closing prayer. Detail, pitch, cut. Sure for career. Pull out. Our Heavenly Father, when your son was here on earth, he said that there's no greater demonstration of love than to lay down your life for your friends. And um, today we have tried to honor those who have done just that for us. And um, we uh, ask your blessing on what we have done here. We ask that you be with the families and the loved ones and the friends of those who have um, who have paid the supreme sacrifice for our freedoms. We ask that you never let us forget them and that you keep them in our minds. We ask you be with those families and give them comfort and peace as they go about the rest of today and as they go about the rest of their year. We ask that you be with our leaders of our nation and you and, and instill in them the desire to pursue peace and and to seek peace over any kind of conflict to avoid um, situations like this. We ask that you be with our, our local governor as he makes choices on our behalf. We ask that you give him um, protection and you give him wisdom and to do so. We ask that you be with the first responders and the people who are on the battlefield of, of today in our nation, that the people who are helping um, the sick and, and in putting themselves in harm's way in order to do that. We ask that you be with them, give them peace, Give them, protect them as they do that and watch over them and their families. We ask all these things in your name. Amen. Retire the colors. Color guard, ten hut. Detail. Right, face. Pops. Forward, left, turn. Right, hut. Pace. This concludes our service. From all of us at Post 79, we appreciate you joining us to honor our fallen veterans on this Memorial Day. Thank you and have a great day.